One of the most intense coasters I have ever ridden is this hyper coaster by Gerslauer in northern Germany at Hansa Park. This is Der Schwer des Kianen. And I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. I'm American. I'm doing my best, guys. Please give me a break. But in English, it translates to the Oath of Karnan, otherwise just shortened to Karnan. This thing is insane. It absolutely blew away my expectations. I was expecting to like it, but I think I was just floored at how intense this coaster was, how fast it goes. And I don't know why more people don't talk about this ride. So this is gonna be my full in-depth review I'm gonna go through all of the elements including several of its unique qualities If you've ridden the ride then you probably know about which qualities I'm talking about I'll get to those at the end of the video, especially for those who might not want to be spoiled by them I'll get to those later. So if you are interested in not knowing about those I'll give you a notice when I'm about to start talking about them so you can click away. So first I want to talk about just the sheer size of this ride. As you can see by the stats shown on your screen, this coaster is 240 feet tall. This thing is ginormous. Drop of 220 feet and it is a very steep drop. I'm not sure if an exact angle of descent has been shown, but it certainly feels like it's vertical. And it's also a twisted drop. Very much in the style of something like Expedition G-Force. And it's just made up of some really wacky elements because it starts off real tall and then it stays really low to the ground so it really keeps that speed throughout the entire ride almost 80 miles an hour this thing is stupid fast like I could not believe how insane the pacing was on this ride of course probably the first thing most people will notice when they look at this is how that entire first sequence with the lift tilt and drop is completely enclosed Hansa Park built this huge tower to put part of this ride in and the crazy part is it's meant to duplicate an actual real-life castle located in in Sweden. So all of the theming for this ride is relevant to something that is actually like legit. They didn't make this stuff up. To kind of sum it up, essentially there is a king, they built a tower, they said it's unconquerable, and they've kind of built this theme around it where, well, you're in the pre-show, it's like people are discovering these like hidden rooms, and there's parts of it that are like possessed and taken over. It's really cool. Unfortunately, I don't really have very many shots of the theming. They do have this cool opening room where you see this throne in a scroll where all this like smoke comes out of it. It's, it's pretty neat. But in terms of theming, that's really all I can show you. But one of the first things you're going to notice when you go to ride this coaster is how you cannot choose your own row. And when I say cannot, I mean I'm not talking someone assigns rows. I'm talking it is impossible to pick your row. It is completely randomized. So you may get front row, you may get back, or if you're like me, you might get put in row three the first five times you ride it. So it is kind of a good thing and kind of a bad thing. As you can imagine, I was not thrilled that I had only ridden it in row three while everyone else I knew had gotten put in the front and the back and everywhere else and I kept getting assigned to the same row over and over again. So it can be frustrating. But if there's any plus side, it's that the moment you get assigned to the front, which is the best row on this ride, it is like such a victorious moment. You're like cheering, you're like hugging the people you're with because it's like, we got put in the front. It like really adds to anticipation because you're just sitting there, you're waiting, your heart's thumping, you don't know what row you're going to get put in and then the doors open and the, something lights up beneath your feet telling you to go to that row and it's like whoa or it could be like oh come on so it really is kind of a hit or miss that being said it's a very unique element I don't know of any other place that has anything like this so I applaud Hansa Park on doing something unique all in all I ended up riding this coaster about eight times as I mentioned several of those were in row three but I also got to try the front back and second rows I, I definitely think it is good to try all four rows but front is definitely where it's at that'll be your smoothest ride experience it's also just great because the view because the trains are so short honestly the forces feel pretty much the same so when you get to your train you'll pull down your lap bar this leaves you very open and exposed if you can try to leave some room there is some airtime moments on this coaster so being stapled isn't the most fun I had a couple rides where I was stapled on this and I, it definitely is more enjoyable when you have a little bit of room but the core of this ride is that you go up this vertical lift till you go down this twisted drop and because you start off in complete darkness you immerse Emerge from that tower at almost 80 miles an hour and shoot straight up and this crazy thing happens to your eyes where the change of light is so drastic that you cannot see at all at least until you emerge from that first half of that element 
That whole first part of Karnan kind of feels like a sea serpent roll, except it doesn't actually go upside down. It's got a very odd shape to it, and I wasn't sure how he was going to feel about it at first, but I actually really liked it, especially since the fact that you are so shocked by the change of light that really, after your eyes clear up, you're already way the heck up there, and you're looking around, and you're like, whoa. It's like such a weird sensation. But after you go through that second part of the element, you go straight back down to the ground, through this crazy fast overbank turn, and for the rest of the ride, you really stay pretty low to the ground. And this is when I think Karnan really shines, because this is the section where you really feel the sheer speed of how fast you are going. You're navigating through bank turns, rapid fire transitions, sharp ejector airtime hills, and if you've ridden Intimidator 305, yeah, you're kinda gonna get a similar like experience where you just feel like you're going stupid fast, navigating this crazy course. Skyrush also gives a similar experience. But those are really the two coasters I would compare to just that section. In terms of the entire ride, probably the most similar coaster to this in America is Cannibal at Lagoon. But even that, I mean, is a stretch. There really is not much like this in America. I'd really like to see Gerstlauer do some more things like this, in other parts of the world. I mean, comparing this to Cannibal, yeah, you see the differences. Having ridden both, this thing is just so much more intense. So it really just shows how unique this coaster is. And it's a long ride too. It is not the most smooth, I will say that. It does not feel completely glossy, like no roughness. There is some roughness to it, but because you're flying so fast, I think some of that kind of blends with the intensity, but it is definitely not the most smooth. That being said, I didn't really mind it. If anything, it may just mean that marathoning it may be a little tricky because you might get a headache just because of how intense it is. If you've ridden into Mirror 35, then you know what I mean. It's kind of hard to marathon rides like that, but out of all the coasters I rode in Europe, this was definitely the most intense. And overall, I really enjoyed it. It was one of my favorite coasters in Europe. So now I'm going to talk about some of the cool things that Karnan does that a lot of people may not know about. If you're riding Karnan soon, I would definitely say try to keep it a surprise, so maybe don't watch this part of the video. I'm putting a timestamp on your screen now where you can skip to see my final score. But if you are interested in knowing what Karnan does, here we go. When you start ascending up that vertical lift, as I mentioned, you are in complete darkness. You are climbing up pretty fast, over 200 feet in the air. And then you stop. And this is a moment where you're like, okay, did the ride break down or something? But the music keeps going and the music kind of builds up in intensity. And you're like, okay, what's going on? You're just hanging there looking straight up at the ceiling over 200 feet in the air. And you're like, what is going on? Like, this is really weird. It kind of holds you there for like a decently long time. And so you're like, okay, this is like really strange. And then this is so messed up. The coaster drops you. You fall backwards down the lift hill and then it catches you at the bottom. It is crazy. Like if you didn't know about it, you would pee yourself. It is so nuts. That being said, it does not feel like a complete free fall. I think there is some element of it controlled, but it's not uncomfortable or anything. I knew about this going in, and so I was like, okay, I'm not sure how this is going to feel. And it didn't feel uncomfortable, and it is a really unique feature. After it catches you at the bottom, you are then hanging there for like a decent amount of time before you start up again. So overall, I really like this feature. If there's any downside, I do think that the more and more you ride it, the more you're kind of like, okay, could we just kind of skip this and go to the top already? I think it is fantastic for like your first time ride. Absolutely. But if you're really trying to lap this thing, it does make it a little hard, especially since it really kind of affects the dispatches. Because the sequence in the tower takes almost what feels like two minutes, it kind of takes a while for them to send out trains. So that's probably the most unique thing about this ride. And then after you hit the brake run, after you go through that entire course, you go back into the tower and you go through the single inversion. And like before I wrote it, I knew there was an inversion, but when I was actually on it, I totally forgot. And so we hit the brake run and I was like, oh shoot, we're about to go upside down. And then you're like, whoa, cause it's like really slow. So that's kind of a fun little feature. I think the stupidest part about this whole ride is the on-ride photo for Karnan is when you are sitting on the brake run about to go in the station after you go through that inversion. You're just sitting there and then there are four flashes of light and it takes your picture. And most of the time people don't even realize that's the picture. So like they're not even paying attention. There's not an excited look on their face. It's like really stupid actually. The positioning of the on-ride photo is absolutely terrible. 
So to wrap this up, what is my final score for Karnan? I'm giving it a nine and a half. Really that only half point that I'm taking away is for smoothness. I'm sure when this coaster opened, it started off glossy smooth, but now that it's been open for a few years, you can definitely tell that it's starting to shake during some portions, especially since you're going so fast. Moments like the bottom of the drop, or in a few sections when the coaster's really low to the ground, it is kind of rough. So that's really the only downside. Because of this coaster alone, this is one of the parks that you have to go to if you're in Germany. Like, it's crazy. This is one of the most insane rides ever. So if anyone from Gerslauer is watching this, please make more. Or if any parks in America are watching this, hey, you should totally add something like this. We need more Karnans out there. As epic as this ride is, it sucks that it's really the only one like that in the world, so let's spread the love a little. But that's just my take on De Schweres Kianen at Hansa Park in northern Germany. Let me know what you think of this ride, if you've ridden it, if you are hoping to one day ride it, and of course stay tuned for more coast reviews here at Coaster Studios.